all the saints live by faith. Romans 11.20 says that all the saints or Christians stand by faith. Romans 4.12 says that we walk by faith. 1 John 5, 4 says that we overcome the world through faith. 1 Peter 5, 9 says that we resist the devil through faith. Ephesians 6, 16 says that we overcome the devil through faith. Top that off, Jesus says in Matthew 17, 21, that nothing will be, will be impossible for you if you have faith. How about our life? Through faith, we are declared righteous and justified from our sin. That's Romans 3.22. Through faith, we gain access to God's grace. That's Romans 5.2. Galatians 3.22 says that we receive the promised inheritance of God through faith. Speaking of faith in God, God is also faithful according to the Bible. Isaiah 4.49.7 says that faith is a part of God's character. Not only that, but Lamentations 3.23 says that God's faithfulness is great. Did you know that? Psalm 89.2 says that God's faithfulness is established. It is incomparable. In Psalm 89.8, it is unfailing. Psalm 89.33, it is infinite. Psalm 36.5, and finally, God's faithfulness is everlasting. Psalm 119.90 says, your faithfulness continues through all generations. And then finally, Jesus tells us in Luke 17, 5, that if you're lacking in faith, you can ask for an increase in faith. So as you can see, faith is a huge theological topic. Faith is an attribute of God, and it's something that all of God's children must possess and even live by. It's a necessity to the Christian walk. There's a reason that faith is mentioned more than 220 times in the New Testament, more than 50 times in the Old Testament. There's a reason that Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13 that at the end of all things, faith, hope, and love will remain. It would be easy to say that being faithful is being godly. If we need faith to please God according to the Scriptures, then we need to search the Scriptures and find out how we can fan into flame faith in our own life to be pleasing to God. Let me pray. We'll dive into our scripture and we'll learn a few short lessons from Jesus on faith. If you'll pray with me. Um, God our Father, we are excited to be here, God, to learn about you. And uh, through your scriptures, we see now and will continue to see, God, that you are faithful and that faith is a part of our relationship. God, I pray that as we study these scriptures, that you will open our eyes, our, our, our hearts, Father, our ears, Father, to know more about this faith that is so important to our relationship. God, I thank you for the message uh, that was shared with the children this morning about faith. I pray that you will continue to help them walk uh, along the road of faith, Father, continue to fan into flame the faith in their life. So well. we thank you for this time, Father. Your glory that we are in your name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So, we're going to study a scripture this morning. It's in Matthew chapter 17, verses 14 through 21. So your bulletin is up here, and the board is in your Bible. Let me read it. Matthew 17, starting with verse 14. When they reached the crowd, a man approached and knelt down before him. Lord, he said, have mercy on my son, because he has seizures, has seizures and suffers severely. He often falls into the fire and often into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not kill him. Jesus replied, you unbelieving, rebellious generation, how long will I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring him here to me. Then Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him. From that moment, the boy was still. In verse 19, then the disciples approached Jesus privately and said, Why couldn't we drive it out? Because of your little faith. He told them. For I, I assure you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will tell this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. However, this time does not come out except for by prayer. 
fasting. So what we have here is just a snapshot of a, of the, a day in life, in the life of uh, Jesus and his disciples. Uh, this particular day actually seems to be a, a difficult one. Just before the story takes place, Jesus and his inner circle being uh, James, John, and Peter, he had taken them up to the mountain and they had uh, witnessed what we call the transfiguration. James and John and Peter were on a spiritual high during this time. They had just been on a, mount, on a mountain and encountered Moses, Elijah, and God the Father and seen Jesus transformed to a glorious state. It was an amazing day for those three. But as they descended down the mountain and they returned to the ministry of everyday life, they immediately were confronted by the realities of this fallen world. A demon-possessed boy, a father who was desperately, who desperately wanted his son to be healed, and a group of disciples that were unable to cast out a demon because of their little faith. Now, we don't know, I tried to picture this, uh, how did this scene go down? But we do know that uh, the disciples were not able to cast out this demon. I don't know if they lined up, you know, and prayed in the name of Jesus. And they were like, no, no, let's bring you in. You know, they, I don't know what happened. We don't know. But we do know that they were not able to cast out a demon, that this boy was still possessed, and that his father was still looking for an answer. So knowing a little bit of that uh, background story, uh, we're going to look into the story, behind the story, in the story, and that is that Jesus used this situation as a lesson in faith. Jesus used this situation as a lesson in faith. He used this situation to teach his disciples and, and us as well what faith is all about. So it appears that at that moment in time, that the disciples they they had let their faith wane. They had let their faith become little, as Jesus says. In verse 19. The disciples, they came up to Jesus and they said, Jesus, why, why weren't we able to cast out this demon? Jesus tells them the answer, and this is the answer in Matthew 17, 19. Uh, actually, in 17, 20, he says, because of your little faith. Now, this is a shocking statement, especially coming from some of these heroes of the faith, the disciples, the apostles. Seven chapters previously in Matthew chapter 10, these same, these very same apostles were casting out demons. So what happened? What, what took place? What changed? Their faith now, in this chapter, uh, in Matthew 17, their faith was too little to cast out the demon. Now it's worth note uh, stating that Jesus didn't say that they had no faith. He just said that they had too little faith. And whatever faith they had didn't produce results. It didn't put God's glory and power on display. And if you think about it, that's what was supposed to take place. Jesus gave them the power to cast out demons. And this was for God's glory, is to heal the earth. But because of their little faith, they didn't produce the result that was intended by Jesus. Their faith didn't help this boy or the father. And from this we get our first lesson from this story. Is that our faith must be maintained. Our faith must be maintained. So by all accounts uh, from this story, in this, in this story, from these scriptures, it appears that the disciples were surprised. It appears that they expect, fully expected this demon to be cast out. And when it wasn't, they were surprised. They didn't even know why. They even came to Jesus and said, what, what's going on? People were coming to them for help. They had previously been able to cast out demons and do far uh, other things as well. But now, for some reason, unknown to them, they were able to cast out this demon. So has this ever happened to you? Have there been days or months or even years that your faith has seems to have become little. Maybe you're not uh, you know, regularly casting out demons, but maybe there's a day or a month or a, a year or even longer where your faith has become little. Your prayers don't seem to be answered. Your ministry doesn't seem to be effective. 
Well, if that's you, then take heart from this story because it happens to the best of us. There may be times in your life that your faith is little. And when that happens, don't give up. Don't lose heart. That was my message to the kids. Don't give up. Sometimes all it takes is someone to just be honest with you and confront you. And that's exactly what happened in this story. The disciples came to Jesus to ask him, what is the problem, Jesus? What's, what's going on? And Jesus tells them the truth, the truth, that their faith had become little. And from that we get our second lesson from the story. Second lesson on faith is this. And this is a, a reality that Jesus rebukes our life. Now, you know, sometimes you get this picture that Jesus is all loving and, and he is loving and he just has good news and that's all he has. But he also comes to reveal things that need to be changed in our heart. And in this story, Jesus rebuked the disciples for their lack of faith. Jesus didn't give them a pass. He didn't comfort them and say, it'll be okay, I'll take care of it, don't worry about it. He didn't do that. He could have done that. Instead, Jesus rebuked their lack of faith. And sometimes our loving Father has to point out where we fall short. That's what any good father would do, even if it's difficult to hear. And in this case, Jesus, uh, Jesus' disciples were falling short in their faith. This is what Jesus said to their little faith, Matthew 17, 17, and he said, You unbelieving and rebellious generation. I don't know why he said it. Maybe he said it more than But how long will I be with you? How long must I put up? I mean, that's that's pretty uh, frank, right? Like, how you rebellious and unbelieving generation, how long do I have to be here? Wow, that's Jesus. It seems harsh. But note here that we can tell from the heart of the words of Jesus that he was comparing their little faith to rebellion against God. We're talking about what is faith. You can see this in the scriptures from Jesus' words that he compares their little faith to rebellion against God. And, it, and Jesus wasn't just rebuking the disciples in this case. The word he used for generation could have been a nation, a generation, or an entire age. Jesus was rebuking the entire age for their lack of faith, for their little faith. And from this, we can see the importance of faith to God. God's desire is for this entire generation, this entire nation, this entire age, to be an age of faith. And there's a reason that God wants us to have faith. It's because faith draws us closer to God. Faith draws a whole world closer to God. If you think about it, without faith, where would Noah be? Noah wouldn't have built an ark that saved his family. Without faith, Abraham wouldn't have received the promised inheritance. The promises of God. By faith, Moses led his people out of captivity. By faith, David slayed the giant. You can continue down this great faith alley. We have a whole cloud of witnesses of people who were full of faith. Where would this world be without people, men and women of faith? By faith, God's kingdom come. God's kingdom come. Faith should be just as important to us as it is to God. Now think about that. Faith should be just as important to us as it is to God. By faith, God's kingdom come, and through faith, we are part of His kingdom. Jesus wanted His disciples that day to be part of His kingdom come. Part of that was casting out the demons. Part of that was displaying God's glory. And He commissioned His disciples to be a part of that. But it required faith. But, in this story, even though that Jesus uh, rebuked his disciples, which sometimes can be painful for the little faith, Jesus' rebuke was not intended uh, to condemn them, but it was rather con uh, intended to, to press, uh, charge them to press on 
to increase their faith, to, to find this problem and then to work on that problem. Jesus reminded them that their little faith was not a permanent thing. And that's good news for us as well. That, uh, in the story, the disciples' faith was not a permanent thing. And Jesus was reminding his disciples of that. And from that, uh, from the story, we get our last lesson. And this is what Jesus says, that nothing will be impossible. Nothing is impossible with faith. Nothing is impossible with faith. After Jesus rebuked his disciples, he followed it up with this. I rebuke you, I rebuke you, but this is the good news. Matthew 17, 20, and he said, he told them, he told them, for I assure you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will tell this mountain, move from here, and it will move. And then he said these words, nothing will be impossible for you. So if Jesus is rebuked about your faith, maybe you were a little bit convicted about your own faith, makes your head drop, then his promise should make your jaw drop. He follows up his rebuke by saying, if you do have faith, nothing will be impossible for you. And these are not empty words. This is a lesson taught by Jesus to convey truth about faith. Nothing will be impossible for you through faith. This reminds me of pastor friend that I had, he used to have these catchy sayings, he used to say this one, I probably mentioned it before, and he said, no prayer equals no power. Little prayer equals little power. Much prayer equals much power. But I want to change those words around. From the story, I want to say, no faith equals no power. Little faith equals little power or no power. Much faith equals much power. Nothing will be impossible for you, according to the words of Jesus. And not only was Jesus teaching this heavenly truth here on earth, but he was being downright inspirational. I mean, this is part of Jesus' ministry. Not only were people just by thousands, by thousands, and eventually by billions and by billions following Jesus, but these disciples, he was being inspirational to them. He was inviting these disciples of his to be a part of building the new kingdom of God. And this is uh, beyond that uh, personal insight that I learned from the scripture by studying it. And this kind of goes along with the definition. By the way, I, I don't know one definition of faith. Uh, it could be uh, a whole a lot of different things. But this is a definition that I saw from the scripture here. And it's kind of cool. This is one definition, not the only definition of faith, but faith, one definition could be that faith is drawing on heaven's resources to change earth's conditions. Faith is calling on heaven's resources, is calling on the power of God to change things here on earth. And that's exactly what Jesus was asking his disciples to do, to have the faith call down to God's power, not their own power, not their own might, but God's power and might to cast out demons and to do even greater things than this. And through this temptation and call on the power of God through faith, we see that God invites us to be an instrument of change through faith in Him. God is inviting us on this journey to be a part of His kingdom. And lastly, it's worth mentioning, as I mentioned in the short sweet sermon, this uh, bit about mustard seed. And now I actually bought mustard seeds and I forgot to cut them there in my briefcase or something. I had this grand idea to pass out mustard. I was thinking about just throwing them, but we rent this place. I don't feel like screaming it up. They're a little bitty. I'll show you. Uh, find me a light show. I'll, you know, I'll just put it up on the table. PS1, uh, 97 Magazine. They're little. What does Jesus mean by this? In Matthew 17, 20, Jesus told his disciples after this whole ordeal, and he said, For I assure you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will tell this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. So I, I personally want this type of faith, that mustard seed faith, or even greater. Like, I think it would be awesome to just, I probably wouldn't move mountains, but... This is the type of faith that I want. So there's been a lot 
rinse and adults. I mean, you can talk about a mustard seed small, but it creates a big plant. You can compare it to the kingdom of God. Jesus compares the kingdom of God to mustard seed as well. Uh, there have been books, there have been tons of sermons, you can research this. But what I want to do is just uh, share my thoughts on this. Um, there are tons of people who have written about this. This is my simple thoughts, and it is simple. I think that when Jesus says that you should have faith the size of a, and if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, this is what Jesus is saying. To me, Jesus is simply revealing that we have unlimited resources to God. And that's, that's he's like, duh. But, but it's simple, and I think Jesus is kind of being He's trying to say this, is that if we encounter challenges in our life, call them back. If life's got us down, then call them God. Call them these heavenly resources. Call them the heavenly power. If we get stuck in our ministry, call them God. Though we are small and weak compared to God, guess what? God is not. Though our faith may be the size of a mustard seed, God's faith is not. I think that's what Jesus is just call on God. It's simple. I mean, you can go like the, theologically, you can agree, you can just compare it to tons of verses. I'm just getting out of this that we have unlimited resources in God, that we may be small and weak, but God is not. And His faith is great even when our faith is not. I think that's what Jesus is saying. So finally, I just want to do some reflective uh, questions for us here in this room from this scripture in regards to faith. Uh, the first question is this. Are you satisfied with your faith? Are you satisfied? The, the disciples, they, they had faith, but it was lacking. And they had to come to Jesus and say, what, what's going on? Are you satisfied? You need to come to Jesus and say, what's going on with my faith? How's your faith in comparison to God's faith? Second question is, to kind of follow up with that, is God satisfied with your faith? Because ultimately that's really what's going to matter. Like, is God the one, is he satisfied with your faith? Does Jesus come, does Jesus need to rebuke you of your little faith? These are reflective questions that we actually need to be asking ourselves. Next question, kind of a logical step after that, or what are some steps that we need to take to increase our, our faith? And I don't you know, it's, it's hard to answer that one because every person is going to be different. I do know that God will take care of that if you ask Him. You might be surprised. Next, what are some mountains in your life that you need to move? Whether that's like sickness or troubles or hardships or family crisis or even financial crisis or rebellious children or lack of friends or whatever. What is your mountain that you need moved? Because Jesus said that the faith the size of a mustard seed can move those things. What are some mountains that you need to be moved? And finally, the last question kind of a self-examination is for our church. What could we as a church accomplish with great faith? And this is kind of following in Jesus' footsteps and being inspirational, which he was. What, are, uh, what can our church accomplish with great faith? How about this? What if Jesus came to rebuke our church and he said, uh, what if Jesus told us that Chinatown was not changed because of our little faith? How would we take that? You know, I, I was uh, doing it, actually I'm still doing a little class in evangelism from 10 to 11 a.m. And I asked a question, what, this is just a total hypothetical question, but I asked uh, the question in the class, what would China, Chinatown look like in 20 years if our church stopped, actually all of the churches in Chinatown uh, did not evangelize. What, would, what is our Chinatown going to look like in 20 years? And one person answered harshly, but frankly, said it's going to look the same because we're not evangelizing right now. In other words, we're not, are we 
making a difference in Chinatown right now. And that, to me, was kind of eye-opening a little bit. Do we need to increase our faith as a church? Are there some, some steps that we need to take? Do we need to examine our own faith? Do we, do we need to call more on the power of God, uh, the faith of God, to do great things for the glory of God, to manifest His kingdom come here on earth, to get the message out that salvation is offered to the ends of the earth? What do we as a church accomplish with great faith? I want to end the sermon with this by just noting that even though uh, the disciples' little faith didn't cast out the demon, Jesus still fulfilled the ministry. Jesus wrapped it up. They weren't able to cast it out, but Jesus did. And this kind of tells us that Jesus does want us to be a part of the kingdom come. But even when our faith is little, he's still, he's still going to work in his own power. Jesus' faith never diminishes. His great is eternal. We can call on that power. Jesus still has the world in his hands. He's still Savior to the world, even when our faith is little. Let us be encouraged to fan into flame faith. It's an amazing thing that we share between us and God. Let me pray. Father God, our uh, the scriptures, God, speak of your heart and your teachings and your desire for us to have faith. God, is clear. God, I pray that if some of us in this room, even if we as a church need to be rebuked because of our little faith, that you will do that, God. But that you will follow that up, God, with encouragement such as nothing will be impossible for you if you have just a mustard size must receive the size of faith. Because God, we know that you want us, Father, to be a people of faith. You want to build us up, Father. You want to continue the good work in us. We know that through your promises in the scriptures. So God, I pray for us as a church and us as individuals that you will continue to teach us faith, that you will continue to reveal to us what it means to be a people of faith. God, I pray that you will help us to have even a mustard size, mustard seed size of faith. Help us to cling to the promise that nothing will be impossible. Father, we have faith in you. In your name, Jesus.